Welcome back to another episode of In The Works. We've got a lot of really cool things to show you today, but first, we're gonna present the Custom Gladius to its new owner. What do you think, Bill? Uh, I think it's pretty badass. Yeah. I think you might be right. Give it to him. Do it. Oh my goodness. There you go. <laughs> Just a wee little sword. <laughs> best. A wee little sword indeed. Oh my. You have a way of making people's dreams come true, that's for sure. What? <laughs> no, I'm glad to hear that. I've been playing Warhammer for 11 years, and this is the first time I've got to hold an actual blade from it. From the best chapter, too, by the way. The Ultramarines. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever you said. Yeah. No, I just I my goodness. like it. Oh, my. It was fun. It no. was fairly sharp. So yeah. You think yeah. about it when you put it on your shoulder. That's why I didn't pull it <laughs> yeah, right through my shoulder. Thanks. Goodness, it's thick. So whose idea was this though? Um, it was actually uh, the Skulls of Carries. Yeah, it's kind of a joint thing, you know. A joint thing. Because you see on some of the renditions, you see that they're just rivets. Mm -hmm. And we knew we had skull rivets, so it was like... Let's oh, see. you already had the skull rivets made? Yeah, yeah, we make them. In your little cast and whatnot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for mostly for pirate swords and stuff, but obviously <laughs> it matched in with the... These are forged, yeah. so Ilya forged these on the hammer. That nice. sword is so photogenic. <laughs> it's so <laughs> nice on camera. No matter how you turn it, Thank you. something's reflecting. You guys have outdone yourself. I was saying the pictures you've sent me just didn't do justice to how great this looks. I mean, and I'm glad you did leather. Leather looks yeah. nice. It's a combination of grip. like four different swords. How many people got to work on it? Oh, just Pretty about everybody. All of us. Everybody did? <laughs> I saw you grinding and I did not envy you at all. Matt <laughs> did most, like of, a lot. most of the grinding work on the guard and the blade. Didn't uh, need to work on my forearms for sure. John did the the pommel. I went through, did the skull pommels. Uh, you know, we all basically had our hands in it. Rick did a lot of the finishing up on the cleaning. Another happy much. customer, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, thanks. So last time on our vlog, I made this short sword, or at least finished it up and prepped it for heat treating, and then I did a successful heat treat. Um, minimal warpage. The blade turned out nice and hard. Our W2 edges skate a file real nice. So I got plenty of hardness, stayed nice and straight. Got a little bit of the uh, warpage out in the tempering. But although we have a successful heat treat, not really happy with this blade, guys. Um, the side that I ground and then etched, you can see the patterns in the center. But the side that I didn't, the pattern really skews off to one side. And I gotta be honest, when making swords, at least for me, the easy part is making the blade. The fiddly, time-consuming part comes in all the fit and finish of the guard, the handle, and the pommel. So I don't really want to spend a whole lot of time mounting this blade up, um, considering I'm just not thrilled with it. So I'm gonna take a page out of my partner Ilya's book, and I'm going to reforge this blade. I'm going to flatten it out, stack it up upon itself, add in some other material, and forge a new short sword that I'm sure I'll be happy with this time. Uh, I guess my pattern got a little skewed from side to side while forging the bevels. Anyway, no matter how it happened, it happened. You can see I'm not too thrilled with it. 
So today, we're going to restack it, forge weld it, make a new blade. One nice thing that did happen is I got my little scalpel blade uh, completely ground, ready for heat treat. So I am going to make this knife happen. So not a total loss. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Uh, in this case, I could make this into a sword, but I'd rather make it something that I have a lot more pride in and just restack it with some other material and uh, forge it anew. making even your successes or failures so this is something you're gonna come upon many many times when you're making blades sometimes you just gotta reforge it all right now that we have a bunch of tiles made from broken swords it's time to go ahead and start stacking them up and getting ready to reforge them back together now I've added in another sword that we made a long time ago that also is Damascus core with um, solid steel edges so I'm going to use this as the base paddle and then stack everything on top of that my little mini 
reforged billet in the forge. It's heating up. The tiles are kind of just sitting there. So at this point, I'm gonna let it get the forge welding temperature, get a really good heat soak on it. And then we're gonna move to the power hammer, try to do our first weld there, and then just see where we go from there. This is a lot like working with Bloom, where it's not just an even stack. We have all kinds of different sword pieces in there. So I gotta take my time, work through it, and uh, in the end, we'll have something that's awesome. Yeah. Classic Ilya style, apparently I'm not doing this Slavic enough, so he stepped in to uh, do a heap for me, right?
as the riffraff is done with the forge, it's time for the master to start working. <laughs> now, I'm going to finish beveling my Sonobi. Sonobi being the preform for a traditional Japanese sword. Now, the key point about beveling Sonobi is to not pre-curve them or pinch them. The Sonobi must be straight all throughout the beveling process. The way that is achieved is by compressing the material in on itself, you're almost pretending as if you're throwing the hammer through the anvil. That way all the forces are equal and your blade is straight in the beginning of the forging and in the end. bending inward is because I'm forcing the material in on itself and consequently all the forces are directed to that specific point rather than into spread. doing this disgusting pinching motion. The reason for that being is I'm trying to make sure that my complicated material is all together. I'm generating heat rather than losing it and the next demonstration I'll explain why. For all practical purposes traditional materials are just like wood. They have their own grain, they have weld lines, so on and so forth. Now here I have two fairly identical pieces of poplar cut from the same board. Uh, here I have two identical pieces of poplar cut from the same board, purchased from your local hardware store. And I'm going to demonstrate two beveling techniques. One is wrong and the other one is correct. First I'm going to try doing what you usually see, and that is pinch the bevel on a piece of wood. As you might imagine, the result will be fairly disastrous. First, the wrong technique. I'm going to try to bevel a piece of wood. Good job, I like it. <laughs> right? Pinching. 
wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Benching is wrong. So it's the right way. Now, we're going to do the right way. So what I usually do, I compress the material in on itself. I'm still expecting some splitting, but the difference will be radical. And again, the other side. Say what? Whoa, you can forge wood. Let me find the other one. You still see a little bit of this, but there's a crisp bevel line right here. You can kind of see it. Mm -hmm. And the wood is not completely destroyed. It's, it's pretty good. Stay Slavic. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching this episode of In the Works. Uh, this billet kind of turned out to be a little more work than I anticipated, but with some uh, Ilya tutelage over here, I think I'm pretty good. I got an ice cream sandwich sized billet. Let it cool down since I have to go home. Ilya did a pretty awesome uh, beveling technique demo. So next time, I'll start drawing this out into a blade. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned with Menstrual Matt and Slavic Smith. Thanks for watching this episode of In the Works. If you enjoyed this and want to see some more of our content, here's two great choices. Also, don't forget to subscribe.